Hey there, welcome to Jerry's the Gin Fish, Fishmonger Jim here. So today I am beginning the process of making fish skin leather. Yeah. I have here uh, a salmon fillet, the skin of a salmon fillet. Right, y'all. Whoops. Um, so this is scaled. I made sure to get all the scales off of it. And then on the skin side, I made sure to get all of the, the meat and connective tissue, any fat. I scraped the fat off of there for the most part. Right, so you gotta scrape any extra, extra bits off of it, right? And real sharp knife, just scrape across this way. You're less prone to cut through can get right down to the skin without any of this fat. That's what I'm scraping off, that gray stuff right there. That's all fat and connective tissue. So. Right, so after they're scraped, you want to rinse them in, in uh, this is cold water and just a little bit of soap, like a couple drops, uh, perfume and, and dye free. Right, so put it in this and then wring it out, you know, kind of like a, kind of like a cloth, like you're washing clothes. <laughs> Okay, so we got this rinsed out. I got the fish skins all, uh, you know, rinsed off, squeeze, squeeze dry. In this container here, I have five tea bags. That's all I can think of. Uh, black tea bags in about six cups of water. And five tea bags, six cups of water. And I let the tea bags uh, boil in the water for a bit as it's not going to be consumed. We want the tannins that uh, we're building up in there. And to that we're going to add uh, about a half a teaspoon of salt. About a half a teaspoon of salt. And about the same of oil. Just a little bit of oil. Probably less than a half a teaspoon of oil. Which is good because I don't have a uh, that's it right there and then the fish so these are gonna sit in this container in this solution uh, overnight in the refrigerator they have to be refrigerated uh, or 41 degrees or less um, incidentally you can freeze the, the apparently you can freeze your fish skins um, prior to doing this um, I have some halibut coming, hopefully, in the next few days. Yeah. So I'll be able to do some halibut skin. But, uh, yeah, these are going to sit in this solution, uh, the five tea bag solution. And then tomorrow we're going to take it out of this solution and we're going to put it in a nice, fresh, cold solution with 10 tea bags in it. Wow, look at it picking up the color already. That's like, fishing in um when you when i use the salmon skins the fish skins 
uh, fishing in cedar water. That's exactly what happens to it. How about that? Interesting. Yeah, so tomorrow, 10 tea bags. The day after that, 15 tea bags. And then the day after that, I forget if it goes to 20 or just stays at 15. But at some point, you don't you don't add more. You just do the same the, uh, the following day, the following day, the following day. But yeah, that's it. That's going to sit in the refrigerator overnight and we will we will we will see it tomorrow okay here we are day three take a look at it wow look how dark oh that's like way darker than i uh, than yesterday oh that's beautiful beautiful wow oh, there's a little bit of a blemish in the scaling job there i did not scale these these were scaled by machine aggressively apparently wow look how pretty that is i don't know if that is that the right word pretty yeah it's kind of neat it's beautiful all right let's uh again i got 15 15 tea bags new batch of cold water i gotta add my salt same amount of salt like a half a teaspoon a quarter teaspoon and about the same of oil so according to mrs buddy the uh the way that you tell when these are done is you take the the thickest part which would be the tail the tail part, right? Like the tail end of the fillet. And you cut a little sliver off. And it should be it should be tanned from top to bottom. It should be the same color from top to bottom. This one is still white in the center. Uh, as it's only been three days, I didn't expect it was gonna be done. But um, yeah, when it's the same color from top to bottom and throughout that is when it is complete so yeah into the 15 tea bags again and back into the fridge and we'll see it again tomorrow okay here we are day four and i have uh investigated a little bit of time i mean i've invested a little bit of time in trying to understand what tanning is and uh you know what natural what other products can be used besides tea tea apparently is not the greatest uh this may or may not work in fact according to uh some of the sources that i have been uh investigating so the remember the uh the cross hatching type pattern that we that you can kind of see there those fibers those strands are what the skin is comprised of those strands are uh collagen all right so Tannin, tannic acid is a naturally occurring uh, element in plants. I think they use it to keep from being eaten. The tannin uh, molecularly or chemically bonds with the uh, <clears throat> the collagen, and it cr it creates like a web, like a matrix of webbing. So after a skin, after the collagen and the uh, tannic acid bond together, they are no longer tannic acid or collagen. They become leather, a third element, which is kind of interesting. So the leather, uh, it, it doesn't rot. It has different uh, characteristics than, than the, uh, the parent material, the parent materials, let's say. Uh, there's something interesting here. So. If you look at this tub here where it's been sitting in overnight there's something missing from it there's a richness that is missing from this tub I'm sure you can see that I'm sure even the GoPro can pick that up uh, that rich red color is uh, it's not synonymous it's not the tannins that we're seeing but they kind of go hand in hand from what I understand a uh, few other um, uh, tanning tanning solutions uh, 
that I'm kind of excited for using, but I think that's going to be a different movie. I'll try to make this one short and sweet. Uh, too late, Jim. Probably, probably too late already. But so you can leave uh, skin tanning in an excessive amount of tannic acid for a really long time, and it's not going to uh, harm the material. So too much tannin is not a bad thing, is uh, what I found out seems to be the case. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just, I'm not even going to check these. I'm going to leave them go, probably do another three days, and then we'll check them, two days, and then we'll check them. So, until tomorrow. Pretty certain these are done. Hang on, let's get the scissors out, uh, and we'll cut one of the tails. I'm pretty sure they're done. They've been in for probably nine days, ten days, maybe a day or two. Too many, but there's no. I, as far as I understand, there's not a too many with tanning. Like it'll only absorb what it'll absorb. Um, yeah, we're gonna give it a whirl. And if it doesn't work, then it needs to go past what I'm seeing there. I mean, the tail of the fish is is considerably thicker than the rest of the fish. But yeah, let me show you what I got. Okay, so I've got this rung out. It's been laying on this cloth for, uh, you know, flipping it over probably half hour. I'm just pressing it down. Of all, yeah, okay, so I gotta start working it. Um, of all the processes that there's information on how to do, this is the one that there isn't. The, uh, the working of the leather, and especially fish skin. Like I've seen people working animal leathers. Uh, man, no clue how to do this, but I will figure it out. So the idea is that we're gonna take this, which is some olive oil, um, apparently neat's foot oil is one of the better oils to use uh, arguably uh, and we're gonna so the idea is that this matrix that we that was created between the the uh, tannic acid and the collagen these fibers if they're allowed to dry they'll dry in a very rigid matrix like really really rigid so by by working the olive oil into the the uh, the unions of these fibers it'll have uh, less rigidity and more uh, fluid ability of movement and will be therefore more leather like less uh, uh, rawhide like so that's what we're going to do we're going to just rub some oil in here now there is a way you can do something called an emulsion and I think I'm going to do that with uh, the rest of the other two skins after I get a handle on or a feel for how to do this. And we'll see which one does what. Just know what everything's about. You're like really unsure how much oil to use. Uh, it's all by taste, I think. Or uh, experience. You know, desired outcome is how much. You know, like, what is your desired outcome? That's how much oil, oil to use. Well, having never done this, that's what we gotta do is just figure it out, right? And as far as the, the method, I'll show you that in a second. Right, so real quick, just wanted to show you this. Um, I don't know how well the GoPro's gonna pick this up, but this is the T, this is what I've been using see the clarity of it. This is the uh, acorns. That's the acorns. That is like a stout. It looks like a stout or at least a porter in color. It's a good way to explain it. Huh? This one would be more like a black and tan or a bitter. And then this one, this one here's my coffee. If anything, 
the coffee looks more like the um, like the acorn. Like that. That's the uh, the halibut overnight, right? So it absorbs. It takes something out of the of the liquid, and that something would be the tannins and some color. But yeah, let's move over to the uh, the table, and we'll get started with this with this process here. Two hands. So as I said, I have no idea if this is dry enough to start, if it's too wet, you know, at what stage do, is it, you know, like important that I start or can I let it get too far before starting? But you know, working this stuff is, is uh, just a matter of keeping the fibers moving as it dries. And apparently this can take, you know, with like with a uh, you know, goat skin or something of that nature, something a little bit thicker than this, it can take hours, you know, two, three hours. So I'm hoping that this is not like that and I can get all three of these done today. Well, that's already looking neat. Like this stuff is so tough. You see how long I'm, how hard I'm, I'm uh, reefing on this right like it's it's leather i don't know why i'm so blown away by the idea that i'm i know that fish skin turned into leather but yeah that's it so another part of <clears throat> this process is called staking and this is nothing more than a piece of wood uh, you know a stick that i put a kind of a a loose chisel edge on and uh, that's what that's for. I'm gonna go ahead and mount that to a larger, to a, uh, a larger piece of wood. This one here. That one. I'll mount that onto there, and then this one. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen that one used, but the idea behind it is that you put your skin, or you, I'm sorry, your leather, out like that. Right? And then, right, so I got one side that's, that's, uh, like, sharper. And then one side that's looser, less um, abrasive, maybe. This is the idea behind it. I might need a piece of cork to uh, to do this on. Oh no, that side works. this tool now. That's awesome. Is it tearing up the pattern on the other side though? Let's do it real hard down on the belly here and we'll see if we wreck the pattern. I guess I just put on some Grateful Dead and put my feet up, drink some of my coffee, eat an apple and make myself a piece of fish skin leather.
this one is uh, effectively done. Uh, so you can impart more oil to the hide and work it more and you get, you'll get something that's less of a you know, like cardstock. This is almost like cardstock like, like this uh, paper behind. Oh, you can hear it, right? Cardstock. That's what I need. I need the art project that I have planned. I need it to be more cardstock like, but just to understand what everything's about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hang on a second. Instead of well, this one here, I'm going to do the same as as this one. And these are going to be the same. Uh, the other way you can do this, from what I understand, is instead of rubbing the oil into the surface of the fish, what you can do is you can make an emulsion. And in there, I have an egg yolk. And uh, to that, we're going to whisk in. Um, about two teaspoons, maybe a tablespoon of this olive oil. And then we're gonna take our filet out, rinse it really well, and add the emulsion to some fresh water, and then leave the skin in that overnight. And what that'll do, the emulsion, an emulsion is a, a combination of incompatible ingredients. So oil and water is essentially what we're mixing together so that as the skin is in the liquid, the water will be the vehicle to deliver the oil to the, to the areas in between these fibers. Like it'll just get everywhere evenly instead of me having to push it in from the outside. That's the idea behind this the emulsion um, the benefit being a more supple like a softer leather so we're gonna give that a whirl I'll show I you the what way we want to do here is mix like. um, and, uh, gradually I don't know, I've never done this before to be clear I mean cooking it's, there's a uh, you know, you use emulsions in cooking oh yeah oh yeah no problem I think you can use that stuff as a paste too or like leave it on as a paste overnight like fold the fold your skin up in the, like that and then rinse it off in the morning it does about the same thing but, well, it's, um, it's odd it's an odd thing isn't it I find it odd now we got about two teaspoons of oil in there I guess I thin it down to eh, right about there. Yeah, right about there. And then in goes the skin. And we'll get to that one tomorrow. I'm gonna go work that the uh, the second one, and I'll see you at the end. All right, we got. This has been sitting for 24 hours. And you can see it does separate a bit, but there's still fat um, attached to the piece of salmon. You see that? It fluffs off of there. Interesting process. I'm anxious to see how this uh, how this works. If it works, I'm sure it works. Do they do it right? That's the question. So two teaspoons of oil. I mean, it seems like a lot to me, and I thought that the entire time I was doing it, but there's your oil. You know, this only this only absorbed a very, very specific amount of it, which is why I think it might work, and I, I'm intrigued. So in here I have some fresh water and literally two drops of just a little bit of not, uh, fragrance and dye-free dish soap. Rinse this off. I mean, I'm, I'd like to tell you that it feels different. I kind of forget what the other ones feel like. It does feel more suede like, like softer. It feels a little bit softer, maybe. Alright, so I think maybe we do that again until we get clear, uh, clearer liquid out of that. And then the same process as before onto the 
the towel for half hour, 40 minutes, and then we'll start we'll start working it. No surprise, different process, uh, completely different outcome. As I understand it, uh, the tanning solutions that you use, they all have a different uh, end quality. So tea might be, uh, you know, produce a more card-like uh, stock, uh, whereas the acorn shells that I have, you know, uh, oak, uh, produce oak bark, produces a different acorn shells produce a different end result but yeah this is just the manipulation of the oil I'm thinking that the emulsion that I made it might be better to use it more as a paste uh, as I've seen it uh, as I've seen done because I actually added quite a bit of oil to this to get this result but yeah I mean it's uh, for Oh, 10 days ago, 11 days ago, I didn't know about tanning, fish skin tanning in general, nothing about leather. I didn't know anything about it. You know, like I have accomplished that and that's worth something. That's a beautiful thing. Definitely not the last movie on tanning as I have these halibut skins and got some other test pieces. Very chill. Um walleye, bronzino, filet, um, and I'm going to be bringing some more stuff home as I see it, and probably a mahi-mahi filet might be next, but yeah, I'll we'll be able to test these out and see what everything is about, but anyway, I think that's about it, I uh, thank y'all for watching, being born is a terminal illness, get the most out of each day people, you never know when the last one's going to come, that's about it, go Good night, good hockey, bye.